You are listening to ChartingWealth.com for Tuesday, the 1st of September, 2015. We continue to look at this bizarre two-day chart. It looks like a very long snake with a head that starts somewhere around the 24th of August. We took all the movement prior, and it has all been wrapped up in this huge down move on the 24th. This is, again, our two-day chart. And then an attempt to recover somewhat over the last uh, three two-day charts, so roughly six days. Now, we're going into the 1st of September. We're slowly getting our way out of the summertime trading zone. And what do we see happening? Well, we see some of a recovery. Now, if we break down from our two-day chart to our four-hour chart, we can see more of a pop-up in the total market, still almost as high as it was. Let's see. Where this started at the opening was 101.60, and the market today ended at 100. So 100, and, well, the high was $100.35. And again, this is a total market. This is IYY. We like to look at everything to begin with, and we can see that, yes, there has been some recovery in the total market. Crossed over going up on the 27th, actually the morning, yeah, late in the day on the 27th. And it has continued, it crossed over then and has continued to move up. However, Look at what's happening to the four-hour chart over the last several days. Looks like it hit that top right around noon on the 27th of August, and it's pretty much stayed there through the 28th, 29th, 30th, 31st, and on into the day as we're leading into Tuesday, the 1st of September. So, What's actually going on? In fact, the market itself was down on the day 0.71%. That's the total market. Let's get a little bit more of a feel for exactly what's going on. We're going to look at a smaller portion of the total market. We're going to look at the S&P 500 as represented by SPY. Now, that's a different looking chart. We see a lot more down move and a lot less recovery. We had a crossover going down back on, for all of us who were paying attention, back around the 18th, and we've continued to see down moves. Again, we're looking at the two-day chart. That's what I'm explaining right now to those people who only join us by audio. And if we branch out to the four-hour chart, we see a crossover going up in the afternoon on the 27th, and the market has pretty much topped out since then. So what does that mean? Is the market taking a rest and going to shoot back up again? Well, it's got a good bit of movement to catch up with, at least on the SPY. These dojis, we have dojis both during the morning on the 31st and during the morning, the afternoon on the 31st. Dojis mean a lot of indecision. And that's what we see both on the four-hour chart and, even more importantly, well, we've got pretty much a doji, a spinning top at least, on the two-day chart. So what does that mean? Well, a great deal of indecision. We shall see what the market shows us. But we're, we have to remember we are in a down move currently on the big chart. Currently, the four-hour chart is in a confirmed up move, but we're losing energy on the derivative oscillator, and, well, we're not really seeing much of a convergence yet, but we can see how we've topped out and have a down move. Uh, actually, SPY was down for the day 0.81%. It was down actually more than the total market. Now, so, we're going to be very cautious and see just what happens. Oh, and what happens? If the four-hour chart rolls over and starts going down in the same move that the two-day chart's in, well, folks, that is a good sign to actually consider getting into the market. And again, our advice is for you to enter virtual trades. We don't give advice on real trading here. We're an education site. We're not a stock calling service. But if you are looking to get into an inverse fund on your virtual trading on SPY, well, on the Standard & Poor 500, then you might consider that. If indeed you see the blue crossover, the red going down, uh, that would be a good 
potential sign to get in. Now again, all things being equal and considering the charts in their totality. Now let's go to the two-day chart and look at the Q's. Q's is even more interesting. Some move down on the 20th, a lot of move down on the 24th, and then move up over the 26th, the candle for the 26th, the two-day, the two-day candle for the 28th, and then lo and behold, the candle for the 31st is a red candle, and actually the Q's are down for the total day. This is just for one day, down 1.24%, considerably more than the market itself in totality and the S&P. And don't forget, we are still in a confirmed down move on the two-day chart. So if indeed, just like we talked about before, if indeed we see the SPY, and look at that, it's been banging its head since pretty much the 27th. It's been banging its head somewhere around 105, 105, 50, 105, 70. And if we see it crossover going down, derivative oscillators losing speed, if we see the blue crossover, the red going down, then indeed you may consider getting into a virtual trade on something like QID, which is a double inverse of the Qs. So something to consider. That's where we are as far as all of our indexes go. So we're looking for a potential setup on a down move on all three of our indexes, particularly the Qs and also SPY. Now let's look at what gold's doing. What is that tricky gold bug doing? Well, on the two-day chart, gold crossed over going up around the 12th, and we have seen it continue to move. Well, it actually started moving up on the 10th, but we didn't have a crossover firing until the 12th. And it always is interesting to me to watch. When you see the derivative oscillator cross at the same time that you see the MACD crossover, it's typically a good sign. And we've seen that. We drew a nice two-day trend line. But look, it was broken on the 26th and started to roll over. But where it has been for the last uh, six candles now, it's, been, it's not gone any lower than 107. And in fact, it closed up today 0.11%. Let's get a little bit deeper into the weeds by reverting to our four-hour chart. What do we see here? Well, we see the market, uh, as far as gold goes, hitting a bottom around 107 and then bouncing up off that bottom. We do not have a cross yet going up, but it sure looks like it's getting close. The derivative oscillator is losing a lot of its negative energy, and it does appear that the MACD is converging to a crossover with the blue leading the way up. And if that indeed happens, then it will be matching what? It'll be matching the current up move that we're already in on the two-day chart. So when you have a roll-off, again, typically what happens with any movement is you have the smaller chart lead the way on any move. And then if the smaller chart rolls over, as we've seen happen here, and what it do, it rolled over going down, even though the big chart's going up. And then if it turns to go back up again, that is where we look to get into our virtual trade on gold. So keep your eyes, keep your ears open. The markets are fascinating every single day, and we hope you see some opportunities in the next few days with the indexes turning over and going down and consequently gold going up. So continue to pay attention. We appreciate you joining us at chartingwealth.com. If you want to get our daily reviews, of course, our weekly reviews always every Monday morning. You can go and sign up for our newsletter at chartingwealth.com. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. We love to hear from you. Don't forget also to tune into our Instagram. Sign up for all of them. We love to hear from you. God bless. Wish you the best in your investing from chartingwealth.com.